Hi, I'm Steve from The Rooted Podcast, and I hope you can join me every weekday for a five-minute or less devotional word study or insight into Scripture to add to your day. Welcome to Fruit Snacks. Hey, everyone. Have you ever heard someone say that the Bible is so dated and that the manuscripts and the evidence we have for it is so far past the time it was written, it can't possibly be reliable? Well, actually, today in our Bible background episode, I wanted to share with you something I think you'll find interesting. Did you know that 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 3 through 7 might be some of the oldest verses in the entire New Testament. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you take some time to read the passage, you see that Paul uses a formula. And what he says before he begins is, for I delivered to you what I also received. Now that implies that this is not original to Paul, what he's about to say. It's something that was told to him or taught to him which means that whatever he's about to say is older than 1 Corinthians itself, the letter that Paul's writing. And if we look at Galatians, another letter from Paul, specifically Galatians 1, 15 to 19 and Galatians 2, 1, Paul establishes a timeline for us that we can use. So according to Paul, he converted on the road to Damascus. We know that story from Acts. And then after three years of going away by himself to sort of sort things out, consider it in his own mind what he just experienced, he then goes to meet with Peter and James in Jerusalem. And then he says he didn't visit Jerusalem again for 14 years. Now, most scholars will date 1 Corinthians to the mid-50s AD. So to be average about it, let's just say 55. That puts Paul in Corinth establishing the Corinthian church somewhere around 51 to 52 AD, because he had to have established the church in Corinth before he could write letters to it. And we know from Acts 18, 12, that Gallio is named as the proconsul, and Roman records that we have from the time period also confirm this dating, and so could not have been after 51, 52. Now, assuming Paul went directly from his second visit in Jerusalem to Corinth to establish the Corinthian church, then that puts his visit after 14 years in the early 50s AD. Now, if we're going to work backward from that, it means that his initial visit to Jerusalem, if we rewind 14 years, would have to have occurred no later than the mid to late 30s AD. And that means that the creed that Paul states in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 7, must have been received within two to three years of Jesus' death. And this isn't just Christians or Christian scholars who are making this claim. Skeptics actually agree with this timeline. I'm going to read you a few quotes. Gerd Ludemann said in his book, The Resurrection of Jesus, The elements in the tradition are to be dated to the first two years after the crucifixion of Jesus, not later than three years. Robert Funk wrote, The conviction that Jesus had risen from the dead had already taken root by the time Paul was converted, about 33 CE, on the assumption that Jesus died about 30 CE for common era. The time for development was thus two or three years at most. And one more, Michael Golder says, It goes back at least to what Paul was taught when he was converted, a couple of years after the crucifixion. So what's the takeaway from this, other than knowing a neat Bible fact? It means that the very first Christians believed that Jesus not only lived and died, but that he rose again. It's not a later invention by a later church trying to deify Jesus. It has always been the case that Christians believe that Jesus lived, died, and rose again. And what we believe today, we can rest assured, is the same thing about Jesus that the very first Christians believed. 